As young girls, we grow up believing all sorts of married of things, fairy tales, that one day Romeo will come and take us away and we will build a castle with him and live happily ever after. And very often when we grow up, we realize that, hmm, there's a challenge. Romeo isn't actually Romeo. Romeo comes up with all sorts of challenges and uh, flaws. And we marry him. He doesn't look like anything that we thought he would be. And eventually we have children. And eventually comes a day when we have to say goodbye to Romeo. And our lives very different to what we thought it would be. Today I'm talking about single parenthood. I have my friend here, Robin Noel, to talk to me about single parenthood, uh, the journey. The journey to being a mother, hopeful, and then finding yourself one day alone. Robin, hi. Hi, Welcome. Bridget. Thank you. Yes. And thank you for agreeing to talk to us today. It's only a pleasure. Yes. Um, I'd like for you to introduce yourself, how many kids you have and all of that. Okay, so I'm Robin, um, Robin Newell. Um, I got married in 1995, also met my, my Romeo. Um, got three kids from him, three teenagers. Um, in fact, 14-year-old Lane, 17-year-old um, Tehila, and a 21-year-old Caleb. Wow. Yeah. wow, you just still look so beautiful and oh. young. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and when did you meet your Romeo and how long were you married for? Um, we met each other in um, 92. Um, we were married for 17 years. Wow. Got married in 95 in Natal. Mm -hmm. um, relocated to Johannesburg in 99. And um, yeah. I can only imagine the excitement of being young. I mean, it's such a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so the excitement of being young and finding your Romeo, mm -hmm. starting out new, mm -hmm. and um, I imagine he was dashing. Yeah. And uh, so you thought, here comes my castle. It was very really exciting in the beginning. I mean, uh, it was a dream come true. He was, he was my Prince Charles, charming. He was my everything very in love. In fact, you know what, we lived on love and fresh air for most part of, of, the, of the seven years, first seven years of our, our relationship. And when, when our kids came into our life, it was also just marvelous. Wow. Um, did you experience what they traditionally call a seven year itch? Yes, I did. Did you? Yes, I did. What I does it look like? What is that? Uh, um, that was a painful experience. Um, and exactly I, on seven years. Exactly on seven years. In fact, um, it was it was in two thousand and two. We got married in ninety five. So two thousand and two, my my last daughter was born, and um, straight after the the birth of my daughter, I discovered that um, he he had met somebody else and was in a relationship. Um, that floored me because. I was in shock. I never ever thought that um, he'd do something like that. Um, mm. The perfect world that you'd build yeah. actually turned out not to be so perfect after yeah. all. Yeah, and you know, um, the strange thing is that he'd had this, this, this relationship and yet our relationship didn't change. So it was still as the beautiful. I love yous, the you looking gorgeous. Um, so you had no way of even thinking it could no. ever go wrong, ever? No, no. Actually? No. And no. I think that was the turning point because that kind of betrayal, it goes deep. Um, it touches a very deep place with, within, within your soul. Mm. And um, from then on it was, the trust was just not there and... Um, the brokenness of it. The brokenness. The brokenness of it. Of it yes. Yeah. And and the kids. How did what did that do to it? To them. I mean, I would I would imagine um, for some people it's easy to keep that um, bro breaking um, mm -hmm. separate, and um, and the kids don't suspect anything. But I've also seen people where the kids are highly affected by it. I must be honest to, uh, with you, Bridget. I kept it away from the kids. We kept it very separate. It was a private matter. It was between me and him. 
um, life in the newborn household continued yeah. with, with that knowledge mm -hmm. and just maintaining their stability was just critical. It was like crucial. Like you're paying your pillow, your, your tears into the pillow, yeah. you know, um, flowing and flowing and possibly feeling that helplessness. Mm -hmm. And so fast forward to today, um, I would imagine eventually the kids got to know. Yeah. Uh, the kids got to know. Yeah, so that the perfect world you'd built wasn't actually so perfect. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of stuff that contributed to the to to uh, to the end of the relationship. Um, he'd started a, a business in Natal, so we re relocated back to, Jeh to, to to Natal. In fact, I stayed in Johannesburg because I still had to maintain. It was the prime of my career, so I couldn't just up and leave my job to to assist him or to be with him in in um, his start of his business. But having said that, we had a good infrastructure in Natal. We moved our kids back there, he moved back there, we put them in schools. Um, I commuted, and actually I commuted for eight years. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that just him and what the betrayal that happened in our relationship contributed to the demise of our marriage. Mm -hmm. The distance The distance did. too. The distance did wow. as well. So I carry some of, 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 of that responsibility. Wow, it's um, interesting that you're saying that it's actually, that, mm. that, that there's a big role he played in the, yeah. in, the, in the breakdown, but so was your part as well. Because yeah. very often, um, as women, it's easier for ourselves to see ourselves as having been the one done wrong to. Yeah. And yeah. as a result, it's the villain, Romeo was a villain. Yeah. Um, somehow there's a, there's a duality, there's your space in it, and so is his. Yeah. Today, being a single mother, what does it feel like? Uh, Bridget, life as I knew it changed. That fairy tale and that stability, that, that home that we'd created for our kids, it ended. And um, as a single mom, I cannot say that it's been an easy journey. It's been a very tough journey. They were teenagers. Yeah. No fault of their own. Mm -hmm. But I had to find that strength within me. And I must be honest, without God mm. in my life, and just the knowledge of who I am mm. in Christ mm. has helped. Um, the guilt was there, so mm -hmm. there was a lot of guilt, even, yes. even with the kids. Mm -hmm. They didn't know um, part of the story. Mm. So now that they are teenagers, I was was easy to have a conversation with them and explain to them actually what actually happened and how we'd come to this place in our, our lives. Change. This change. Mm. Yeah. Um, growing up teenagers is there's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, yes, and you're a young, beautiful mom. Yes. So clearly so, there's that connection at yes, least. So we find a lot of fun in in what we do as a family mm -hmm. um, but there's also some pain as well because they're exposed to so much and that means a father yeah. it means that male figure yeah. to help you yeah and and he's not he's not present mm -hmm. so the kids have been with me for for a bit since the divorce um mm -hmm. they've they've stayed with me and um I think that the pain for them is just not having their dad around. Yes, both um, parents. Both parents, because I think for, for especially for a young boy, Caleb, mm -hmm. he needs counsel. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm still playing the role of mom and dad. Yeah. So, so very recently, um, I went through a process with my own children, who mm -hmm. I, I'm a single mother too, and uh, it's just it's a process called psychotherapy, and children's um, psyche gets sort of looked mm -hmm. at to mm -hmm. see how a parent can complement and assist their children in 
becoming the, max, the maximum potential mm. being that they can be. Mm. And with my daughter, I found that um, uh, one of the elements there is that she's very hardworking, she's very um, confident, but she's mm. also got self-doubt. Mm. And when I engaged the psychotherapist, she said to me that doubt and self-doubt is an area that only a father can embrace, can can bring up the confidence for a girl child, mm. which is very interesting because she said there's not anything that a mother can do. Mm -hmm. You can tell a girl child all day mm -hmm. that they are beautiful, mm -hmm. but a space of confidence is a father's space. When a father, um, you know, compliments a young girl and makes them feel unable to do anything in the world, mm -hmm. that's the one area. I mean, there's there's areas where, where a mother fits in and, and compliments a child and gets them really ready for the journey. Yeah. But there's other areas that are happen to be for a father only. Correct. And so I would imagine that's a very difficult place for young Caleb, for the other children too, mm. that mommy is doing what they can for us. She provides all that she can for us, um, as you do. But there's just that one place, mm. things that you, mm. with all your infinite wisdom, can never provide. And I believe that's one of your biggest, biggest challenges. Yeah. Or any other woman out there watching us, okay. that's their challenge. I think I can relate, Bridget, and I think, you know, you have shared the poem from Tehila. Mm -hmm. Tehila did a poem. Yes, yes. And, and Sharing her pain through yes. it. Yes, and it speaks to just that, loving herself, and the difficulty mm -hmm. through the journey of not being able to love herself, yet within her own heart mm. she wants to love herself yes. and I think there's there's a big role for a dad to play there in yes. building the confidence of around a young girl, of, of a young boy. girl. Yeah. 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 well you know um, part of the reason why we do this is to give other women encouragement for them to realize that there's others like us mm. out there and particularly it, you can survive yeah. but what are the five things that you would say you spoke to one of them and it spoke to my heart immediately the journey that you had to walk with god mm -hmm. because part of the whole thing is that without god you wouldn't have made it mm -hmm. but what are the maybe let's say four, th four other things mm -hmm. that you would say to a woman out there today watching us to give them courage mm -hmm. and inspiration i think for me it's just understanding the psyche of who we are as women mm -hmm. So what is the psychology of Bridget? What is the psychology of Robin that makes us who we are? Mm. And God being the first part and mm. of, 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 of who, you are, who we I are. am, who you are. are, and that strength that makes us wake up every, every morning. It's I want to live. I'm tired of falling out of bed every morning. Yes. I can't do it anymore. Particularly because you're young. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. you have yourself to still grow. Yeah. So there's that duality, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And just trusting ourselves as well, you know, in terms of the decisions that we, we, we make. And I must be honest, a lot of it has been about the kids and and creating the stability and, and, and a home that they can thrive in and a home full of love, mm -hmm. starting with God and, and, and making God the center of our home. But at the same time, also understanding that Bridget and Robin, we also need our lives. So mm -hmm. making ourselves feel good about time for ourselves, you know, time for ourselves bringing okay. our whole selves into it. Um, be it bringing ourselves mm -hmm. to whole like selves that. to work, mm -hmm. be it be bring our whole selves back from work to be to, this home. To, 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 to be a mother. To be a mother and be there mm -hmm. for, for the kids. Um, mm -hmm. and just um, constantly building them up yes. and letting them know who they are. That's fantastic. So if I'm to sum up what you just said is a relationship with God is very important. Yeah. I like the second thing that you said, understanding the psychology of you. Mm. That is so amazing. Mm -hmm. The thing uh, the thing is trust, mm. trusting yourself, your instincts, your intuition. Yes. It's all in there, I guess, mm. isn't it? it is that we have it in ourselves mm. to to have some wisdom and and, and to perhaps it's to just have the confidence and trust in yeah. that. 
Um, then you yeah. spoke about having time for yourself. Having time for Understand yourself. that you also need to be kind and gentle with yourself in the process. Correct. You can only do so much, Correct. you know. Um, the fourth one that you said is such a beautiful thing, that making them understand who they are. But understanding, I think if I want to build on that, that um, for them to be able to explore who they are mm. in the safety mm. of being mm. comforted, uh, mm. provided for and guided by you. Yeah, and, and I think, Bridget, irrespective of how you find yourself being a single mom, in my case, it's, it's through divorce, mm. um, it can be breaking. So it can break you down. But the, the, the challenge is not to stay down. Mm. You embrace your tears for a time and a season, and time is our biggest healing. Mm. Therapy has been marvelous for me. Be it you find therapy in the, the, your loved ones, your workplace, mm. um, be it through clinical psychology, um, just to help you get to that place of wholeness again. Yes, rebuilding yourself rebuilding again, yourself again. Which is a very difficult thing, but it marks success. It marks yes. a certain victory. Mm -hmm. Being able to say, I like it. You just said, um, allowing yourself to break, but not allowing yourself to stay down. Yeah. That is a profound thing. I think I'll take that with me as well. Okay. Um, Robin, thank you. Thank I, you. I, I know it's been a very um, a deep conversation, but this is what this platform mm -hmm. is about, mm -hmm. having deep and meaningful conversations amongst women um, with the understanding and hope that through my pain, through your pain, um, even through your victory, another woman can learn so much. Yeah, thank you, Bridget. I really appreciate you um, inviting me today. Thank it's a you. pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's it for us today. I think we take so much uh, for granted uh, that so much is expected of us to be grown up all the time, to always go back to the reference board, the fairy tale book. We don't have to. We evolve. And we will break, particularly through a journey of um, realizing that Romeo isn't really Romeo. Uh, the biggest thing to do, like Robert's, Robin said, is um, to break, allow yourself the time, give yourself permission to be hurt, um, but not to stay down to find a way to rebuild yourself again and come together. And that's what I wish for you out there. My sister, my friend, my daughter, um, until we see each other again. Thank you.